What I'm going to show you today is how to debug a component. You'll need to have the Intel Visual Fortran compiler, which plugs into the Microsoft Visual Studio. What I've got here is a component that I've written called it Type 201. It divides an input value by some parameter value and puts that out as an output. So if I run this, you can see I've defined an input, which is a sine wave, just using an equation. And my result should always be half of the value of the sine wave because I've put in a parameter value of two. So I'm dividing by two. I'm going to make a parameter value of zero. You'll see, of course, that we're going to get an error. These floating point division by zero errors are the result of some error in the code that's not being handled properly. I could either modify this code so that it errors out before I try and divide by zero, or I could check the input value or the parameter value rather and give the user a, a warning or an error. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Windows Explorer and in my Transys directory, there's a folder called compilers. In there, there's a folder called Transys. And in there, you should find transys.sln. It stands for solution. It is the Intel Visual Fortran compiler's information about how to rebuild Transys. If you want to compile your own type as its own DLL, you could put your component's source code into the my type project. I'm gonna work with this trend DLL project. And the first thing I have to do is I have to put this source code that I am using inside the trend DLL. If you've ever looked at the warnings and notices, this information is here to tell you where Transys is finding the source code for a particular component. If you note here, it'll say the following types were loaded from type 201 x64.dll type 201. Okay, well that is an indication that type 201 was found in an external DLL. Had that same type been located in the TRAN DLL, there would have been a message here that said the following types were loaded from TRAN DLL type 65. So essentially we have to change this so that instead of loading our component from an external DLL, Transys is going to load it as part of the TRAN DLL. So I go back to the Microsoft Visual Studio and I'm going to right click on this pre-built project and I'm going to say add existing item. Then I'm going to browse to find where the source code for my component is stored in this type 201 directory. If I double click on that type 201, here is the code. What I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to right click on this trend DLL project and I'm going to say rebuild it. What I'm seeing happen is all of the code for the TRAN DLL plus this new component that I've added to it get recompiled. This will take a little while as it cycles through. There's a bunch of warnings here. None of them are critical. At the end, I should get a message here that says whether things succeeded or failed, and I get that rebuild all succeeded. I'm going to rerun this project now. And I get the same error. But what I want to show you is that if I look in the notices now, it'll say the following types were loaded from trend DLL 64. That's what this information is there for. It just tells you where these components are getting found and loaded. On to debugging. If you drop your cursor on a line and press the F9 key, you'll see that this little red spot shows up. Then if I say I want to debug this solution, what will happen is the compiler will call the transis executable. It'll ask me, well, what input file do you want to run? The input file that I want to run is the one that we're working on here, project 11.dck. I know that simply because here I'm working with project 11.tpf and the dck is the input file that was created. So I'm going to select the input file that I want to run and then the compiler is going to run until it gets to that point and then it's going to wait and it's going to say, all right, what do you want me to do next? If I hold my cursor over a variable, in this case time, it'll tell me what the value of time is. It'll tell me what the value of time step is. I can then walk one line at a time. Now I'm going to press the F10 key. And you can see that I've now moved one step forward. Time is still zero, it didn't change. But time step is registering as zero right now. And I'm gonna take one step forward and now I've got that time step is equal to 0 0.125. So you can see variables by hovering over them. 
You can also type variables down here so that if I wanted to see what the value of current unit was without hovering over it, I could then F10 and it shows it in red when it's changed since your last break. So if I step another step forward, now it's red because it didn't change between this line and this line. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the breakpoint on this particular line here by pressing F9 again. And I'm gonna scroll down to the only substantive line in this entire piece of code, which is my result is equal to input divided by parameter value. And I'm gonna put a breakpoint there. Now I'm going to run up to that point. You know, there are menu items for all of these. So for instance, uh, when I was pressing F10, that is the step over, that will step over a call to a subroutine. If you wanna go into the subroutine, you might press F11 or choose this step into icon. You can also step out of a subroutine. And the one that I'm about to do here is just continue F5. It'll continue until it hits another breakpoint. So if I press this, I should arrive here. Time has now advanced and my result has a value of zero. I'm about to evaluate it. And I can see that my input value is 10 and some change and my parameter value is zero. So if I step over this next line, essentially have it evaluate my result, then the compiler itself will error out and give me an indication that it was this specific line that generated my problem. So we've discovered that this is the line that causes the problem. There are a number of ways that we could fix this in the code. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to this spot where we've just read in that parameter value for the very first time. That's right here. Well, you'll recall perhaps that it's reread here at certain times, but we only have to check it once. So I'm gonna add in a line here that says, if parameter value is equal to zero, then call found bad parameter. It takes three arguments. The first argument is the parameter number that's at fault. So that's in this case, one. The second argument is whether you want this to be a warning or a fatal error. In our case, we want it to be a fatal error because that will stop the simulation and prevent us from actually trying to set that result. And then the final thing that we wanna do is we get to give it some text. So the parameter value cannot be zero. So there's my check. And if I've got a bad value, I'm gonna call this routine. So here, let's build the solution again. The difference between a build and a rebuild is that a build just compiles the code that's changed, whereas a rebuild recompiles everything. You can see I've succeeded down here. And now when I go back over here to our simulation and run it, I now get a clean error message that says that there was an error found. Here's our error. Referenced unit has a bad parameter value. Parameter one reported problem, the parameter value cannot be zero. So I've shown you two things in this video. One is the method by which we can recompile the trend DLL. The other is how to debug a component. I should mention here that there are two ways of recompiling something, either debug mode or release mode. In order to do what I've shown you here, we need to make sure that the TranDLL project is set in what's called debug mode. And in order to do that, you just go over here to the configuration manager and make sure that this particular project is set to debug. The other alternative is to set it to release, in which case we would not have been able to walk line at a time through the code.